So in this tutorial, um, this is another beginner's guide to GIMP video. So I'm going to be going over a few of the basics in GIMP that you need to know. So nothing um, very complicated. So only watch this if you're a beginner um, because you won't need to watch this if you think you're pretty good at GIMP. So I'm going to, I'm going to be covering um, a few of the selection tools in the toolbox today. I'm, not gonna, I'm going to be slowly moving down and covering um, all the stuff in the toolbox. So hopefully by the end of who knows when I'll have covered everything you know about the toolbox. Um, now this isn't going to be too in-depth. I'm going to briefly cover each tool. Um, I'm probably not going to go over every single thing about it, but you know, so I'll be going over it enough so that you know, uh, you get a general idea of what it does. So first tool in the toolbox is the rectangular selection tool. Uh, you can press R to access that on your keyboard. And as the name suggests, if you click and drag, um, you can make a rectangular selection. So, and a selection is marked off by this little, some people call it a marching ants kind of thing, or it's just this like white and black kind of line that keeps moving. Um, so, once you've already made that selection, you can also go in and adjust it. Now, a selection is pretty much where you select a specific spot. Let's say I want to uh, mark off or select this spot right here, um, and pretty much you can only paint or apply effects inside that box. So as you can tell, I can't with um, I cannot draw outside that um, selection. So that's how a selection works. Now, um, in your you know rectangular s now in your toolbox, you also have these little options. So as I was saying, there are four selection modes. Now the first one that I will always be on is just the replace current selection. So you can make a selection, um, but now if you go make another selection, it's going to get rid of that old selection. Um, so that's just your default selection mode normally. Um, now your second selection mode is add to current selection, which, as it suggests, I can make another. I can make one selection right here, but then I can go and make another selection right here without the other one going away, and I can even intersect my selections so I could create like a weird shape like that. Um, now the next selection is subtract from current selection. So let's say I already have this selection made um, and I choose subtract from current selection. Um, and by the way, all these little modes you can get by clicking on them and they're right under the title here and they have mode next to it. Um, so let's say I, I'm on the subtract from current selection mode. Um, I can cr make a little selection right here and it would as the name suggests, subtract that from the current selection. So I could go in and make an even more unique shape. Um, so I'm not sure. So you could do that. Um, and just subtract all that. Now the next is intersect with current selection. So I need to here I have this selection. Now if I have this selected and I try to and I go to select something else, it will uh, intersect with that selection. So if I were to try to if I want to cut that off, I could well I could do that. Um, it's kind of hard to explain what that one means, but it's useful for certain things. Um, you know what I'm going to find a better example to show you what that one does. So this is a good example of how you could use um, the intersect option. So here I've whipped up some really quick text. Um, it's obviously not the best thing in the world, but you know. Um, and what you can do is, let's say you have a unique selection, like if I were to right click on this layer and select alpha to selection. So I have this really unique layer right here. Um, and I want to get rid of part of this layer so I can create a nice gloss on the top. So I can get my rectangular select tool and choose the intersect from selection part and choose the part of the selection I want to keep. And bam, there we go. Now, oop, and now I have that selection. And by the way, if you're wondering how to create a gloss on your text, I have a tutorial on that and you can look for it on my channel. I'm pretty sure it's titled text tips number one or it's number two. Um, so you can do that. Of course, you could always use the subtract mode, but you know. Um, so moving on. now. Uh, some other stuff in this rectangular select in the tool options box is feather edges. So I'm going to go ahead and boost this up to a radius of like 30 so you can tell what I'm doing. And let's say I made a, oops, I made 
a selection and I you know feathered the edges um, and I were to press delete on my keyboard and then go and select none so as you can tell the edges of this deleted part are uh, kind of blurry or feathered as you would call it so the more the radius is the fuzzier and blurrier the edges are going to be um, so and if you can't really tell what I'm talking about here is what a uh, that's what it looks like when you normally with no feather edges, feathered edges, and that's what it looks like with feathered edges. So it kind of blurs um, the edges of that. And you can also uh, create rounded corners with the rectangular selection tool, and that's exactly what it says. Um, you can create rounded corners. So as you can tell, as I'm dragging this little bar, you can tell that the corners of my selection are being rounded off. Um, another thing is this, uh, I'm not really going to go into the expand from center because I honestly don't know what that is. Um, I've never really used it before so it's not really anything you're going to use. Um, and then there's also the fixed, so if you do fixed, you can do, let's do aspect ratio and we'll do 1, 2, 1. And what that does is now has a fixed aspect ratio. So as you can see, as I'm moving this and trying to drag out a selection, I can only drag out a perfect square. Um, it's not letting me you know, drag out anything else. So that's what the fixed option can do. You can also make it so that it has a fixed width. Um, so as you can tell, I can't dra drag out any farther than that. Um, I can drag it out as tall as I want, but I can't go out any further. Um, that's what that does. Now, moving on to the ellipse select tool, the modes all work the same, so does the feather edges, and so does the fixed. So, the only difference with this is it is an oval, or an ellipse, instead of a rectangle. Now, the free select tool, um, now the feather edges and all the modes work exactly the same, um, except this is a free select tool. You can draw any funky shape you want, and turn that into a selection. So as you can tell I've drawn my own custom selection so you can either draw that in as you can tell. Um, you can either draw that in or if you click you can drag out these lines um, and you can make a polygon. So that works as well. So you can either click and add points to that or you can go ahead and just draw it out however you want. Now the fuzzy select tool um, again, modes work all the same, so does feather edges. Um, I'm not really going to deal with any of those yet, but if you click on a certain area, it's more or less going to choose similar colors in there. Um, and if you turn up the threshold, or, um, turning up the threshold will allow it to choose more colors. So as you can tell, when I turned up the threshold, it shows a larger portion of that. Now if I were to turn down that threshold to about like just turn that to about 20 and as you can tell I can't choose quite as much let's if I turn up to 53 I could choose a larger amount of color um, now the select by color tool is pretty much what the name states you click on a part and it will select all the colors that it recognizes in the whole image now in the fuzzy select tool it only chooses a portion of it um, and I'm running out of time I just noticed I only have like 30 seconds left until this is over 10 minutes and I'm sorry this is really quick um, I'm going to end the video now because this is really long